Awesome. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of Measuring Dev Skills with Code Signal. And as part of this, we'll be able to show you some of the interesting things you can do with Code Signal, from measuring uh, front end skills to measuring back end skills, specialized abilities. So excited to kick it off. And today, we'll be talking about measuring UI skills with the platform. OK. I think the microphone is all working now. It's it's working on the stream as well. I think. I mean, let us know if uh, if that's not the case. But anyway, um, yeah. So basically, today we're going to be talking specifically about uh, a user interface task. But before we get into that, we might want to just talk about what we're looking at on the screen right now. So for anyone who's not familiar with the Code Signal interface, this is sort of the, the IDE over here. This is where we're going to be typing out our code. As you can see, there's a bit of a console window down below. And depending on the type of task we're working on, this might give us different information. So since we're going to be doing sort of a front end task today, uh, it would be different as opposed to like an algorithmic challenge where it'd just be a matter of looking at the tests. If we look at the left side of the screen right now, not really much going on there yet, uh, but we can fix that by actually loading up a task. Uh, and by the way, I just want to mention, like you know, everything we see here with like the uh, the cameras and microphones and stuff like that is all part of the uh, internal code signal pair programming solution. So uh, while I select the task here, maybe you can tell us a bit uh, about how this uh, pair programming environment tends to be used. Yeah, absolutely. So the way most of our customers use this is either for phone interviews uh, or live kind of pair programming sessions during on site. So kind of to replace the dreaded whiteboarding sessions, uh, this, is, this is usually a much more comfortable environment to work in. But as you mentioned, this is just one solution, the same ID, the same types of questions, the same testing framework works in our uh, automated testing solutions as well, where there is more connection like this, where I'm kind of evaluating it for you, but instead the system evaluates and auto grades it. Right, and that's sort of what we're looking to showcase today, right? Because not everyone's going to have the time to sort of screen every candidate one on one on one. So we want to show off some of the more automated features of how we can assess someone's UI skills. So yeah. we've. We've got a task loaded up right now. This is one where we want to make uh, essentially this widget. So we have a mock-up of what we want it to look like. And then we have an actual preview window over here of what it does look like right now. And I guess the first thing you'll notice is they're pretty far off from one another. So maybe we can do some work to, uh, to fix that. Notice that within the IDE now, uh, we've got a bunch of preloaded code. That won't be the case for every challenge, but in this case, uh, we have the HTML all ready to go and we can switch over here to sort of the CSS part of it. We can actually choose CSS, like traditional CSS, or we could use SAS, which uh, we'll do today just for sort of nicer syntax sort of stuff. Um, you'll notice also these things, these two buttons here, the preview and run test. Preview isn't something we're really going to be using because it's going to auto update. Uh, so anytime we make a change over here, it should update like uh, right away. So for example, we could just say that we want the uh, font family to be something a little nicer, Helvetica, something like that. There we go. So right away, we're a little closer to what we're looking for over here. And we see that it automatically updated the preview. But something I'm really curious about now is we see this run test to see output. So we might as well go ahead and hit the run test button for now. And what, what, what's really happening in the background, I guess, when you're clicking that run test button? Yeah, so that's a great question. Essentially, what it's doing is it's evaluating how close to the task uh, you know we've got so far, right? It's it's trying to check like how accurate is this, but of course that can be kind of a tough thing, right? It's it's not actually like going through and looking at the code. It's basically taking the code that we've got, it's sending it off to a dedicated server that we call a code runner, and it's. Uh, running that all within an isolated environment so that it's free of uh, interference in case, you know, so that like uh, it's not limited by your processor speed or web bandwidth or anything like that. Uh, once it gets there, it's running a Selenium browser. So it's actually rendering this stuff within the DOM and it's it's looking at the elements. It's making comparisons and that kind of stuff. So it's, uh, there we go. Yeah, so it can see, you know, for example, what color these things are. 
uh, what dimensions they have, these kinds of things. Uh, so right off the bat, you know, something like this it gives us a note about how every quadrant should be having a width of 150 pixels, a height of uh, 100 pixels. We can go through and get detailed information about each of these things. So it uh, looks like we've made a change to the quadrants right now to make their background color blue, their color white. We could throw in, you know, like a width 150 and uh, height. Around. Sorry, I just kind of wanted to show the collaborative editing functionality there because uh, you so far only you've been writing code. So the beauty of the interviewing solution is that it's like Google Docs for coding, where both of us could be coding at the same time, and you've got colored code source, so uh, we each can see like who, who is working on what, and it doesn't even have to be two people. Uh, it, re it really, I mean, it kind of goes crazy because there's too much going on, but you can do it with three, four, or five people, which comes in handy if you want, for example, like three people to be interviewing uh, one person at the same time. Pretty amazing tool. Uh, really nice thing in case of one of us misses something or that sort of thing. So um, the first change that we've made here is basically we're giving this thing the right dimensions, right? The correct dimensions according to what we're looking for here. So I guess I should have mentioned this earlier, but notice how we have like a check mark on one of these and then a bunch of little warning symbols over here. So now if we run the test again, hopefully this one over here about the dimensions of the quadrants, that should be resolved. So let's try running the tests. And again, I mean, it is sending this over to another server, it's loading up that Selenium browser, it's rendering it in the DOM, it's checking the elements. So it can take a little while to run the test, but all things considered, not too bad. Okay, so there we go. It's actually saying, yeah, it looks good. You know, these things seem like they're the right uh, dimensions over here, so not too much to complain about. If we look at some of the other general things it's looking for, it's things like, you know, the colors of these things. And, uh, you know, again, this is the sort of thing you'd be able to tell very easily if you're actually talking to a candidate, you know, you'd be able to visually inspect. But the idea is we want to be able to do this without having to actually be there. We want to be able to assess our, our devs' abilities. So just copy pasting in some uh, information we had before. I mean, it does tell us basically what colors we're looking for. And also, I mean, it's within a certain range. You know, if we were to change this to uh, something pretty close to the right color, but not exact, it should still be within the tolerance that it's going to accept it and say, eh, yeah, close enough. I, I don't mind if it's a little bit off, right? Because we're not here to get into like the super nitpicky details. Okay, so we're making more progress. Yeah, it looks like all of our colors are correct over here. Um, so our general tests are mostly working over here. The test for each quadrant, well, we're, we're a little farther off. And I guess something I should have mentioned also is that uh, we kind of glossed over this little mobile symbol over here, so we should probably talk about that. I mean, responsive yeah, we, web design is a big thing, right? So we want this to look nice, not just uh, as like a desktop view, but also in the mobile view. So we want, we want it so that in the mobile view, they're going to be sort of stacked vertically like this, whereas in the desktop view, they're going to be more horizontal. So we've got some other code for that that we can uh, paste in here. just some quick Flexbox stuff sort of takes care of that. Uh, now, if we switch between the views, we can see that they're actually being stacked. So let's see if it's actually registering that, if it's, if it's noticing that. And I mean, that's the nice thing about using Selenium is that we can make these kinds of changes. So it's often used for when we actually have like interactive elements, like if we had some, like a JavaScript component, which I think we'll be looking at next week, but uh, yeah, not to get ahead of ourselves. Um, yeah, so here we go. The quadrants are aligned vertically above each other with a zero pixel margin. That's what's going on in the mobile view, whereas in the desktop view, um, they're rendering a two column table layout. So actually, you know what? The only thing we're getting wrong right now is this thing right here about the title card. So we could actually go ahead and look at that card title and just fix that one manually. So it needs to have, whoops, not card title. There we go. It needs to have 20 pixels below, so we can just say margin bottom 20 px. Notice it changed ever so slightly there, so now if we run the test, since we're passing all of the tests within that group of general tests, what we're gonna find is that the whole thing should sort of give us a check mark now, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. So since all of the tests within this group are being passed, it's, it's good to go. That's and this cool. is, 
this is a nice thing about this tool. I mean, if we're using this to screen candidates, it's not just a pass or fail kind of thing. I mean, we have sort of detailed information. Uh, it's telling us like what percentage of the tests we're passing. Uh, we could look at this and say immediately like, oh yeah, this dev is, is pretty strong when it comes to things like alignment, uh, maybe like the finer details of maybe the margins off or something like that, maybe the colors aren't quite right. I mean, we can get detailed information here. And if we wanted to, if someone came out as a strong candidate, we could look at their code and decide from there, you know, the human elements could be sort of mixed back in. But the main thing is a lot of this can be taken care of in sort of an automated way. Right, and one thing that is not really covered uh, in this challenge because it doesn't really have a image comparison test, but I know that image comparison is also one of the options just because you can only get so far by just looking at DOM elements and alignment and staking. Uh, sometimes you also want to see if they can come close enough to the pixel perfection, and that just becomes one of the test cases. And it's really cool because as a feedback to the candidate when I'm looking at like how well am I passing the image comparison test, it actually shows a hit map indicating like, okay, these are the parts that match and these are the parts that are not matching. Right, so if we wanted to be a little more strict about it, uh, and there are limitations to how many of these tests we can have, right? Because we don't want it to take forever when we have to run the tests sort of thing, Absolutely. so. Yeah, candidate experience is usually top of mind when doing this kind of stuff, because at the end of the day, you know, you want the person who's taking the test to also be enjoying it, and not just doing it and feeling like it's a chore. Well, it's been a great experience for me so far. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I've been enjoying watching you code. I'm not trying not to touch it myself so that I don't mess it up. It looks like <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll do a fine job of messing it up on my own. Well, I think that covers most of it uh, for today. For next week, we'll be doing our best to keep up one episode a week for uh, this series. And next week, we'll be hoping to take a look have slightly more complex examples for front-end engineers, one that involves also the JavaScript. You probably have noticed this one only has HTML and CSS, so there's nothing dynamic going on here. Next week, we'll try something that actually has a dynamic component to it and see how that whole thing works. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Likewise. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, and see you next week. Bye for now.